What's up guys, Ash Bigale here, owner of Charleston Fossil Adventures, and welcome to a sneak peek behind the scenes of how we assemble all of the Patreon packages that we ship out with Shark Tooth Club monthly. So uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, if you are a supporter on our Patreon, aka Shark Tooth Club Monthly, uh, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear who all is watching. And uh, for those who are tuning in throughout the broadcast, just give it a little shout out as to the town that you are uh, viewing from. So uh, give you a quick look here at the pile, pile of shark teeth. And these are only going out for the month of December. So for everyone that uh, supported us in December, all of these shark teeth, you can see we've got some pretty big ones here, like that guy, nice little Angustodon's blade, uh, quite a few Angustodon's. All of these are going to be shipped out in our boxes. So everyone who signs up gets a box a little bit like this. Uh, hello, Holly. Thanks for tuning in from Lexington. Uh, your fossils are going to come in a little bag like this as well. And each package has a fossil already in a gem jar. Sometimes these are really nice, pristine examples of teeth. Got two uh, snaggletooth shark teeth right here. And sometimes they are unique uh, in a pretty interesting way. So this one, for example, it looks like it's a complete tooth. It might look like a thresher shark tooth, but this is actually a Mako shark tooth. It would originally have been about that big, but you can see some of that crown is missing. So that is actually feeding damage where Mr. Mako shark bit down on something like a sea turtle or maybe the carcass of another shark, probably something like a dolphin or a whale, and his tooth broke off. So whoever gets this one in their package uh, has a pretty cool story to it. I include a slip in each package as far as what your display fossil is. So I will write out what each of one of these fossils are, and we include some other things that aren't shark teeth. It may be called Shark Tooth Club Monthly, but we have some other cool items in there. This one is a piece of Colombian mammoth tooth enamel, and anyone who is watching from South Carolina might know that this is our state fossil. Pretty cool find right there. Getting shipped out. Got a chunk couple of chunks of mastodon tooth enamel. This is a lot like a mammoth, but it was eating some different plant matter, uh, tougher, woodier vegetation, large, hard nuts and fruits, and it had a different tooth shape. And so these also are going to be from the Ice Age, about 11,000 years old at minimum, upwards of two and a half million years old. And again, I'm just shipping these out to people. Um, so I'll bring you down a little closer while I put some of these teeth and fossils into the gym jar. So next up going into this one, I've got a tooth from the precursor to Megalodon, the direct precursor that is from Carcharicles chubutensis. It just barely fits in that jar. We'll get him shipped off to someone. Got another nice snaggle tooth right there getting shipped out. And uh, feel free as you're watching, if you have any questions about the Shark Tooth Club monthly subscription, feel free to ask, leave a comment below about it. It is hosted through Patreon, so it is a monthly subscription service and all the fossils on this table were collected by me each month i pack them up and ship them out i do not keep them uh, you can see i've got some storage cabinets back there but 
I do not have enough for all of these fossils. Got a new one right here. This is a long tooth tiger shark. Pretty cool shape to those teeth. Next up, we've got the two-time predecessor of Megalodon, Carcaricles angustidens. Nice little serrated cusplets on the edge of that tooth right there. There we go. All right, let's see. We'll do another snaggle tooth. This one I'm going to put in uh, the other way, but I'll show you this way. This is a lower lateral tooth. So I'll probably be putting out a video later this year on how to identify your shark teeth. I did a how to find shark teeth on the beach video last year, and this year's will probably be how to identify them because you can look at a tooth like this and it sure looks a whole lot different than a tooth like this, but they're from the same shark. So we can talk about some different things like that in that video coming out later this year. Gorgeous snaggle tooth right there. A lot of people ask, how do you clean your fossils? They always look so shiny. How can I get mine looking like that? And quite frankly, the sites that I collect at the fossils are coming out like this, so I don't have to do any cleaning or polishing of them at all. All that I do is I give them a quick rinse under fresh water and make sure kind of the salts are out of them. If you don't do that, then the fossil takes on this kind of white film. Uh, if I rub my finger across this, Let's... You can see it darkens wherever the moisture wipes away. That is salt. All the white is salt from the salt water because these were collected on the beach. So uh, this one needs a little freshwater rinse before he gets shipped out to someone because that salt will just keep uh, leaching through to the top as it goes through cycles of humidity and uh, dryness but other than that I mean a nice shiny shark tooth like that that just came like that naturally out of the deposit no cleaning necessary now sometimes you're going to collect fossils from a site that is um, not a beach so you might have something that hasn't been tumbled around in the ocean for a bit and for those fossils, uh, a lot of museums use a substance called a consolidant. And it's basically a form of fancy glue that holds the fossil together. A lot of the ones here in the low country use something called a vinac, or it's a polyvinyl acrylate. It is basically little tiny plastic beads that you dissolve in acetone, so don't dip your hand in there, um, that then you soak the fossil in and the plastic soaks through the bone and holds it together. And because it's dissolved in acetone, it dries pretty quickly and you're able to preserve that fossil. And then it's also reversible. You can take a fossil that has been preserved with these plastic beads. You can dunk it in acetone and undo anything, or if it needs to be conserved in a different manner, you can then do that as well. So let me flip the camera around here. We've got all of our gem jars together. And again, here is that pile of shark teeth, some of which we collected on the last live stream. Again, some really gorgeous teeth in here because they're from a dredged locality. Unfortunately, a lot of them are missing pieces, but for a tooth that's about two inches long there, that's still something pretty nice to arrive in your inbox. 
or rather your mailbox. I'm trying to get this to focus as best I can. It was something that we had issues with on the beach as well. I was hoping that the Wi-Fi here would deliver a little better picture quality because this is the same phone that I use for all of the regular filming. But it looks like we might just have some issues with the YouTube live streaming. So that's, that's a shame. Uh, other things I am packing up and shipping out, we've got a little manatee vertebra right here. This is not exactly a manatee proper like we would see today, but something like a dugong or uh, some other Cyrenian family member. Uh, you can tell that this one is a manatee or dugong vertebra because it's heart-shaped. This one's a little more squished, uh, but in comparison to something like a dolphin vertebra that has more of that oval, then uh, you can tell there's a difference between the two. So that's a neat little find. Also, I like to talk about poop a lot, fossilized poop. This one is a coprolite, so fossil poop. This one came from a crocodile. Uh, I know it looks like a rock in this view, and the picture doesn't exactly help with that. But uh, what we are looking at here, you can see a little bit of a spiraling on the inside uh, from the structure. Hey, Ontario Rockhound, thanks for joining. Glad to have you here. We're just talking about fossil poop. So we got a crocodile coprolite right here. Um, this one... Other things we can look for are a few little holes on the outside, little pits. There's a groove where, from where something was located in the fecal matter. And usually on these, this one not so much, they will have a flat side where the animal's intestines just kind of settled out on the ground after it died. So most of the fossil poop we get here uh, in the low country, uh, they're going to be from marine critters, so they had to be uh, held in the intestines. Technically, they're called cololites and not coprolites, since they are ex not expelled, but they, it's still fossilized poop. All right, so you're asking about seeing little bits of things in the bone. I've got a great example over here. Let's bring him into the light. This is from a different locality. It's not in South Carolina, but it is my best example of fossil material in coprolites right there at the tip of my finger is a shark vertebra that is held inside of a shark coprolite. There is a little orange speck at the tip of that thing as well. That is a fish tooth. And then on the inside of that one is another fish bone. So some pretty, pretty cool preservation there to have found uh, other bone and tooth material in the coprolite itself. This one actually has, I think, five different bony elements in it. So yeah. It is very cool. I was excited to find that. Um, for the low country, for our shark coprolites, unfortunately, on the hundreds that I've looked at, um, I've never seen any bone material preserved. Uh, it's something about the carcariniform digestive tract that just doesn't uh, allow any bone or scale or uh, enamel to, to be preserved throughout the digestive process. It's really interesting. Um, a good topic for study for a local grad student, I should think. Um, other things we're shipping out this month for our Patreon supporters. Got a nice section of a horse tooth from the Ice Age. That one's pretty cool. Got a lower cheek tooth right there. Just a piece of one. Um, piece of ivory. You can see some banding 
longitudinal lines running up and down the length of that. And then if the magnification were better, you might get see some cross hatching here on the short end. Those are the Schrieger lines. Uh, that is a very specific type of banding that we see in fossil ivory and also modern ivory too. So mammoth or mastodon, tusk ivory right there getting shipped out. Thanks for joining Chuck. Glad you're appreciating the specimens. Let's see. Got a giant thresher shark tooth right there. Headed out to someone. Some really gorgeous shark vertebrae here in the back. This one from a member of the Carcharhiniform sharks. So something like a bull shark, tiger shark, uh, reef shark, and even snaggletooth shark. Probably a tiger based on how big this one is. Other type, we've got lamniform shark vertebrae. Things like your sand tigers, your threshers, and members of the megalodon lineage. Uh, of course, clam stein kerns. These are great little heart shaped clam fossils. Oh, what else do we have back here? More big chunks of sea turtle carapace. Really neat pieces there. So kind of my overall process here with sorting and shipping everything out, I've got my piles started. It's going to get a little more refined before I pack it up into the boxes, but I essentially have all of my supporters here. I know how many of each level that I need to pack up. And for members of the Benedini tier or that top level, they are going to get the first pick. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to see some nice bigger teeth, get those pulled out and divvied up among everyone in that group, pull out some of the other nice specimens from the vertebrae, other miscellaneous bone, turtle shell, stein kerns, our unique items, get those packed up, they get packed in the satchel and then placed in a box with a card talking about everything that is in there and then some other information about the other levels and a little bit more about what the subscription entails. Uh, then I'll go through, I'll pick out the Megalodon tier fossils and then lastly the largest group is the great white sharks and they get the remaining fossils divvied up among them again that about maybe 17 to 20 people are getting all of this divvied up none of this is staying on my table after tomorrow so it is everything must go uh blue light special so uh we've got our nicer display fossils right there getting packed out as well now I will also include things in a small plastic bag for something, say, like this horse tooth or uh, the garfish scale, the mastodon or mammoth tooth enamel, just so that whenever someone opens their package, they can see, oh, okay, this isn't just a bone. It's not just a piece of turtle shell. It's something a little more special. Now, you might be asking, I'm going to flip you all around here real quick. Sorry for the camera work shaking. Okay. Uh, you might be asking, now, Ashby, how, how do people tell what they have in their boxes? How, how can someone look at this when they receive it in the mail and say, oh yeah, it's a piece of a mammoth tooth? Well, at each level, uh, people get fossil identification provided. So... If we start off at that Benedini level, so the top tier, they are going to get a 60 minute virtual session of fossil identification with me each month as an opportunity to use. Uh, if they don't use it, it just expires for that month and they get one the next month. Uh, during that time, I'll identify anything that they want to have identified. So that in and of itself pays for that tier level instantly. Um, if someone's on the Megalodon tier, so the $50 tier, they're going to get 25 fossils identified each month, 
and they can email me photos. So if you have 25 fossils in your box, you can email a photo of each and every one and I'll identify it each month. Uh, Great White Shark tier, they get 10 fossils uh, each month to be identified by photo in email. And then uh, the Tiger Shark tier and the Bull Shark tier get uh, five fossils identified each month via email photos as well. So uh, that Tiger Shark tier is the last tier that really receives fossils from these uh, collections each month. And what they get, give you a little sneak peek of what they're getting here for the month of December, because these are all collected in December. The tiger sharks are going to get 10 random fossils identified. Uh, a sand tiger shark tooth, a shark vertebra, a fish vertebra, a piece of extinct loggerhead sea turtle shell, a snaggle tooth shark tooth, a reef shark tooth, a piece of a megalodon, a section of horse tooth enamel, a set of teeth from a burr fish, and also a stingray tooth, because stingrays lose teeth as well. So they'll get a little bag of 10 of those, and then uh, they have a QR code in their package. They can scan it with their phone, takes them to a website that changes each and every month with the list of fossils that is in their package. So this is my life at the beginning of every month. I've got this table full of fossils from a month of collecting, and I get to see them all again before I ship them out. Um, it's, it, it's a lot of fun because uh, I get to see everyone that is a, a supporter that's been a supporter. And for those that don't know, Shark Teeth Club Monthly started because of the pandemic. When I closed down for in-person tours, I launched this so that uh, I could help sustain myself during the pandemic, but also provide people with that chance of discovering fossils. So it kind of grew from that. And now I have these beautifully curated boxes, if I do say so myself, um, where people get to receive the fossils I collect and show in the YouTube videos. Uh, so Ontario Rockhound asked, what does a burr fish look like? Great question. Think of a porcupine fish, think of a puffer fish, and uh, that's, that's what a burr fish looks like. Uh, their teeth, again, I don't know based on the camera quality if this is going to show, but if you catch it just right in the light, you can see there's some little lines, little plates of enamel right there. That's the quote unquote hard palate of the fish where he is grinding up coral and barnacles and mussels and other little mollusks and things. Uh, the curved part of this up here, that's the front teeth. So if the fish was looking that way, this is how the teeth would sit. So here's his front teeth that he's going to be picking the barnacles off with. Uh, the bottom or the articulation of this, you can see it's a little bit, uh, it's bilaterally symmetrical because it is in the middle of their body. Yeah, it's a tooth plate. Um, this is, it's called a tooth battery. Um, so this is, uh, you know, a nice little cl collection of little flat plates and uh, little tiny teeth. Nolan, thanks for joining. Uh, we do look some on Morris. Uh, we also do trips out to other areas as well. Uh, we're gearing, I'm, I'm trying to get my captain's license uh, so that I can take people out to some farther off sites. Um, for those that don't want to travel by kayak on the rivers, we also offer trips to Folly Beach and then Edisto Beach by request, uh, where we're walking on the shoreline because the main benefit of our tours is, you know, half of the, I, not even more than half, like 90% of the people on the beach might walk over something like this. Uh, I'm going to walk along behind them and point it out to all my clients and say, that's a section of a cheek tooth from a horse that lived here in the Ice Age. Uh, a lot of people might walk over it. A lot of people might pick it up, but they don't know what it is. Um, so that's that's the benefit of going on a tour with us. Um, so Morris is a great place to go. I got a, a 
bucket of fossils from there, as you can see. So um, it is the thrill of the hunt, that's for sure. Oh, let's see if anyone has any other questions, I can take them now. I'm going to start sorting bigger teeth. I can help you see what I'm seeing right here. Uh, kind of getting this all ready for the members of the Benedini tier. There's a really nice one. We found that one on the live feed a couple weeks ago. That one was stepped on by someone. Can you believe it? I can. It's easy to step on teeth out there. They're a bunch. I'm sure I stepped on a lot too. Um, fun fact, a lot of the teeth people call Megalodon teeth down here in the low country um, are actually not Megalodon teeth. They are precursors. So someone might find this guy and say, oh yeah, that's a Meg. Well, if we look right here, it's actually cooler than a Meg because it's got that teeny little extra part of the tooth that bumps out. Uh, it shows it is a precursor to Megalodon. So even older than Megalodon, this one might be, it's either a juvenile uh, direct precursor called Chubby Tensis or the two-time predecessor. So Grandpa Megalodon essentially and his name is Angustidens. That's the species name. Yeah, Nolan, uh, Folly Beach, great place to look. We enjoy leading the tours out there. My favorite find from Folly, I've got a partial saber from a saber-tooth cat and um, partial tooth from a dire wolf. It's one of the chewing teeth from the dire wolf. Uh, it really looks like a pebble but there are enough features there to see the ripples of enamel and place it as the, it's called the talonid basin of the carnassial tooth. Carnassial teeth are the big teeth in the bottom jaw and top jaw, technically, of dogs and cats uh, or canids and felids. And those are the scissoring teeth they're using to cut up the meat. Uh, and the talonid basin is the flat part of those scissoring teeth. So took it to a museum actually up in Tennessee during a paleontology conference and looked at some of their specimens up there and then also uh, checked out the specimens on display here at the Mace Brown Museum at the College of Charleston and was able to place it uh, there for the dire wolf. So that's really cool. I've only ever found two dire wolf fossils. My dad found a toe bone from one once. That was really exciting. Uh, let's see. Got a lot of big teeth this month. The Benedini and the Megalodon shark tier, they're going to be pretty happy. I'm still taking questions. If anyone has any paleontology questions, had a video blow up over Christmas. It was a bit of a surprise. It's the video of the sperm whale tooth that we found on a dredge island down here. Of course, since it's now crested 300,000 views, it's the most viewed video I've ever had. Um, and the <laughs> it's dredged to, pardon the pun, uh, it's dredged up people from all depths of the internet uh, People saying it's fake and it's planted and this is how YouTubers make money is buying a fossil rock and planting it on the beach. And it's like, uh, well, they, they just don't know the channel, of course. Um, they don't know that you, it's hard to get a little more legit than us. Um, but yeah, it was that giant sperm whale tooth and I'm never going to live down the size comparison that I used for it. I had just had sweet potatoes the night before for dinner and a sperm whale tooth, it's a rather oblong banana shaped tooth anyway. And I once grew sweet potatoes with my dad in the garden and the, the small ones that come out of the garden, they look a lot like sperm whale teeth. And so when I saw this thing embedded in the rock, the, <laughs> the first thing I could think of for a comparison was that it looked like a sweet potato. So <laughs> everyone on the internet has been having fun uh, saying 
that it's hilarious. That was the first thing I thought of for size comparison was a sweet potato. Um, but yeah, that's been fascinating watching that video blow up. I had not, it was a few months old. I, di I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. So that's interesting. You can go check it out. Um, hey, Bird Garden, thanks for, thanks for tuning in to the live stream. We are sorting fossils here uh, for our Patreon boxes right back here. Got a new look to them. Let's see. Chuck asks, what is the most common fossilized whale species found along the Low Country? Great question. So, um, prior to, uh, uh, thanks, Ontario. Uh, glad that, yeah, I, I agree. People are just jealous when you find stuff and they, they shout it out as fake. Um, so that's, that's not cool. Um, so, uh, hold on. Let me see. Oh, someone asked a question and... Shoot, my mind is blanking. Uh, I was talking about sorting fossils and I am illiterate with the... Okay, all right, here we go. Okay, what is the most common fossilized whale species found in the low country? I got it. Um, so prior to say, oh, 2015 or so, everyone would say squalodon because we find these whale teeth here in the low country that have two roots and they have a serrated crown. And prior to uh, a big public push from the local college on educating everyone, people just thought they were from the shark tooth dolphin squalodon that is relatively common uh, in North Carolina and Virginia deposits during the Miocene. Well, as viewers of this channel know most of our rock layers here in Charleston that produce the most fossils come from the Oligocene. So we're talking rocks that are uh, 23 to 33 million years old, which is older than the age range of uh, the squalodon teeth that everyone was referring to. Um, so ours, the most common dolphin teeth, would be things like Wipatiid dolphins, uh, Eurhinodelphinids, and um, we have Xenorophid dolphins, and they're big fancy scientific names, but essentially they're, uh, some of them are double-rooted serrated teeth that look a lot like squalodon teeth, but aren't, because they're much smaller. Um, actually, one of the more common ones is one called Ankyloriza tiedmanii, uh, it was formerly called genus Y because it just never had a name ascribed to it, but it is a, uh, again, a double-rooted, serrated, uh, oh, excuse me, not double-rooted. It's a double-fused root, um, hence the name, and Kyloriza means fused roots. So you look at one of these teeth, it had two roots, but then the cementum on the outside fused those two dentine rods together to make one root, and then you have a big serrated tooth. So it's one of the more sizable whale teeth that we get here in the Low Country that a lot of people find. Uh, the smaller ones that are double rooted and serrated like that, a lot of them are going to be from Wipatia dolphins. It's this kind of spear toothed dolphin that had big, long, pencil-y buck teeth sticking out. Um, and then things like Urhinodelphinid dolphins have really small conical teeth. Uh, and some of them even have this kind of uh, lobed, serrated, uh, spade-shaped tooth in the back of their jaw, which is really cool. Um, so those are those are kind of, that's a very long answer to your question, Chuck, and I apologize that it took so long to answer, um, but it's, it's a complicated question uh, for sure because most of the ones I just listed off come from the Oligocene. Uh, some things, some members of that group come from the early Miocene as well, and on a future video that I want to do, I, I need to lay out the stratigraphy of Charleston. And you'll notice that we really don't have a lot of uh, Miocene rock layers here in the Low Country. So any Miocene material that we get 
has been reworked down into younger layers like our Pliocene Goose Creek limestone and then our Pleistocene or Ice Age, uh, Wando, uh, Ten Mile Hill, Waccamaw, Pen Holloway formations that have all the Ice Age critters that I love talking about. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that answered your question. I'm sorry to be long about it. Um, I have also gone over time. I was aiming for about a 30 minute video. Um, so I appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, if you want to check out the Patreon subscription boxes, it's, uh, if you just go to Patreon, you can type in Shark Tooth Club Monthly and you can sign up over there. Each month, this pile of fossils gets sorted out into boxes and shipped to people all across the US. So it's a lot of fun. Please check them out. And uh, tours will be reopening this year. Uh, they'll be fully public again uh, since we are all outside. And I've got some really cool videos coming up. Uh, it's going to take me a while to get them out, but I'm going to do my best to get them, uh, get them out to y'all in as timely a manner as I can, I can manage. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next live stream. Bye, guys.